you know, your mom and dad told you about the birds and bees, but today we're going to talk about bees. And I'm at Garland Nursery with Lee Powell. And Lee, we know it's a really a serious subject about bees in the landscape these days. Yeah, it's become quite a popular thing to try and draw the bees into your landscape, and there are a number of reasons for that. One is they're, they're, the, they're the, um, the bug that pollinizes all of your fruits and berries and that type of thing. They're a good bug. Yeah, so they're a good bug to bring in. Um, the other is there's been a lot of trouble with bee, uh, bee colonies lately. There's bee yes. colony collapse and, and, and they've had some troubles getting colonies established. So uh, bringing nectar plants into your yard is a great way to, to help the bee population. And you know, gardeners love to do that. We love to bring wildlife and it's okay if it's a little wildlife. You know, we want butterflies and hummers, but bees are really an integral part. They are, and you know, there are some people that are a little nervous about having bees in their yard mm. because of the p potential to be stung. But really, bees aren't going to bother you unless you bother them. They're not like a wasp. Right. Um, so it really is a great thing to have in your yard, and, and they're not going to cause problems unless you're over there, you know. <laughs> Spotting at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we have some interesting plants here, and some are in bloom and some are not, because you want uh, flowering plants all season in your garden. So let's check this one out, this spiky one. So this is the chass tree, or vitex is the other name for it. Um, it, is, it is what it says. It's more of a tree. It'll get probably 10 to 15 feet tall. So it's something that you need to think about where you're going to put it in your yard. But it has a beautiful blue bloom that really draws the bees in uh, later in the season. Yeah, that is nice. And so for an earlier kind of a blue, Ceanothus is nice for June too. Yeah, the Ceanothus bloom over a period of time. There are a number of different varieties of them. The bees absolutely love this one and it's a beautiful plant for your yard. It grows fast, um, nice dark green foliage, so it's really a great landscape plant as well. And we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the bee balm. Bee balm is another later blooming flower. It's a midsummer bloomer, red, uh, pinkish red, and it really draws the bees in. It's an it's a interesting perennial that gets, you know, probably three or four feet tall, spreads out a little bit. Um, but really a nice bee plant. It is nice, beautiful colors. And what is this one with the dark leaves and the pretty flowers? So that is the nine bark or physocarpus. And again, with that, there are a number of varieties, mm -hmm. um, but it is one that blooms in June and the bees absolutely love it. It's also a great foliage plant, nice fall color and nice peeling bark in the winter. It does drop its leaves, but the, the bark is kind of a whitish peeling bark in the winter. So it's decorative then as well. Ah, oh, really nice. And this is just dynamic. That's orange and yellow. One. We have blanket flower, uh, which is the orange and yellow, and there are a number of different colors of flowers with the blanket flower, and that is one that the bees definitely go to. Uh, it blooms for an extended period of time. If you do a little deadheading, it'll bloom all summer long. Oh, that is gorgeous, and I love it right next to the purple and yellow. That's really a pretty combination there. Yeah, the, the the set, we have salvia there. Um, the, again, there are a lot of different varieties of salvia. And, and they all draw the bees, they bloom at different times. Again, if you do a little deadheading, they'll put out a second bloom later in the summer. The yellow there is the potentilla, which um, has, there, there are three or four different colors of potentilla as well. Uh, the lavender one here is a scabiosa daisy. Oh, pretty. And there's a pink and a blue for that, and the bees like that too. That is nice, that's a nice cut flower too, so really, double duty in the garden. Absolutely. And then moving over next to the scabiosa, we have the Autumn Joy Sedum. And that, again, is more of a late summer bloomer, a pink flower. Um, the butterflies and the bees absolutely love this plant. And it's got the succulent uh, leaves that look good throughout the entire spring and summer season. Cool texture. And at the very end there, you have a pink flowering shrub, it looks like. So that's Escalonia Pink Princess, and that is a fairly large shrub about uh, five to six feet tall, but it has sporadic blooms all summer long. The bees like it, and it makes a wonderful landscape plant as well. Well, you know, this whole cart can be in your garden. This would just be a lovely little garden. It would. <laughs> just perfect. Well, you know, um, come down to Garland's and really ask their staff about bee plants, and really, you can have a landscape like this. Your staff is really so knowledgeable, and I think that we can all use bees in our garden. It's really something that we would love to do. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.